there is a lot of restiveness out there there is uh, unrest which is brewing and all of this is actually only going to start growing when the uh, economic crisis uh, really starts biting but will that mean that pakistan will break up and that process has started uh, there will be some kind of a fight back you might call it the empire strikes back you know the the pakistani military establishment is not just going to sit on the sidelines and watch the country unravel when you hear the pakistani discourse they say that look okay fine right now we are down and out uh, and we want you to come and help us and when you come and help us and we come out of the uh, you know mess that we are in and we become strong that is when you know we will take you on now if you are dealing with a mindset like this then why you have to be suicidal to uh, try and uh, you know move uh, in the direction of rescuing such a enemy there is a lot of restiveness out there there is uh, unrest which is brewing and all of this is actually only going to start growing when uh, when the uh, economic crisis uh, really starts biting it has already started biting but i think uh, it is going to uh, become even worse as we go forward but will that mean that pakistan will break up i don't think uh the situation is likely to reach that point just yet i i think what is important however is that for the first time it this is not something that can be entirely uh you can't entirely uh, say that this will not happen this is now well within the realm of possibility but i don't think it is imminent breakups are uh, never simple they are never easy they are never very comfortable there have been a few breakups around the world uh, you know which have which have been very controlled breakups czechoslovakia for one uh, even to some extent the erstwhile soviet union uh, and one could go into a couple of more examples but by and large breakups are very bitter they are very and in when they involve countries uh, they are very bloody Uh, but the important thing is that we don't even know uh, what shape or form uh, this kind of a breakup will take place and that is one of the reasons for that is that uh, there is a lot of uh, there is a lot of complexity in pakistan so for example you know when we talk about pakistan breaking up in four parts we talk about balochistan as a whole little realizing that within balochistan you have both the pashtuns and the baloch uh, and they are more or less um, live in mutually exclusive areas so will there be four provinces or will there be five uh, provinces or five component parts within sindh for example there is karachi uh, is uh, has a large population uh, i think now estimates are it's it's no longer a majority but all uh, a predominant uh, population is of uh, the muhajirs the urdu speaking migrants from india uh, so uh, and and they have been often speaking of uh, wanting a separate province of their own uh, within punjab there is uh, a division between for example the saraiki speaking people and uh, people from central and north punjab and then of course in the kp province you have the hazara division Uh, which are uh, ethnically and linguistically different from the majority pashtun so this breakup is not going to be uh, a very simple thing if at all it reaches that point i would imagine that uh, when things really start deteriorating uh, and that process has started uh, there will be some kind of a fight back you might call it the empire strikes back you know the the pakistani military establishment is not just going to sit on the sidelines and watch the country unravel i think they will step in uh, and they will try and prevent uh, any kind of uh, a break up of pakistan uh, and as long as the pakistan army is even somewhat coherent i think there are question marks about the coherence within the pakistan army about the unity of command about the chain of command within the pakistan army 
but i think uh, those are uh, factors uh, which probably will come into play later on but as of now uh, they are uh, somewhat coherent and they are not going to let the country just simply you know split up we have to understand is that it is not just the uh, people within pakistan uh, who are restive there are international players also who are going to be involved for example within afghanistan there is uh, there is a sentiment that uh, pakistan they've never really agreed to the durand line so there is a sentiment that pakistan uh, in a sense occupies uh, some of the portions which really historically belong to uh, the the pashtuns or to afghanistan so there are those forces which will also come into play i don't think the iranians will want uh, things happening inside pakistan without their say so uh, the indians of course will be very worried and i'll just come to india in in just a bit uh, but i think there will be international forces uh, not just in the region but also uh, the global players who will be looking at what happens in pakistan next uh, some of them might have it in their interest uh, that uh, pakistan uh, becomes history there would be others who would uh, probably be more inclined to what i say that a weak uh, state which is dependent on others uh, and which is not a nuisance for other uh, countries or for the world uh, it suits everybody much better uh, and when i say that you know the nuisance value has to be reduced uh, i'm obviously talking about the end word Uh, that the nukes have to be uh, you know taken under control uh, or there has to be a very tight control over the nuclear program in pakistan so that it does not become a threat to the global security weak economically poor uh, and somewhat unstable pakistan uh, serves india best because its nuisance value is so much reduced Uh, but does this mean that pakistan uh, we should want pakistan to break up indians need to be extremely uh, uh, they need to understand that there are some things india can do and there are some things india can't do and some things india shouldn't do uh, you know it's good to take pride in your own country but very often you know we we we'll keep hearing stuff like uh, people talking uh, in india that uh, you know why don't we try and save pakistan uh, the bottom line is that you don't have the capacity to save pakistan number one you don't have the capacity to save anybody from himself even if you had the capacity uh, the pakistanis are not asking you to save them even if they asked you to save them should you and out there i my own view is that no we shouldn't simply because when you hear the pakistani discourse it is uh, it is of this nature they say that look okay fine right now we are down and out uh, and we want you to come and help us and when you come and help us and we come out of the uh, you know mess that we are in and we become strong that is when you know we will take you on now if you are dealing with a mindset like this then why you have to be suicidal to uh, try and uh, you know move uh, in the direction of rescuing such a enemy so i don't think we should be in that game but at the same time i think we have to understand a very simple fact of life pakistan might be small compared to india but the pakistan problem is a huge problem uh we have to understand that this is a country of 230 240 million people uh we ha pakistan had afghanistan for example on its border and at that point of time afghanistan was a country of about 100 uh, about 18 million people when afghanistan failed pakistan despite the fact that pakistan was deeply involved in everything that was happened in afghanistan pakistan could not save itself from the consequences of what happened in afghanistan so for anybody in india to imagine that when there is this country of 230 40 million people on your border 
when this goes under you can just simply turn around and pretend it does not exist i'm sorry that's not an option uh, it will have an impact on india it that impact will not be a benign impact impact on india will be severe uh, we have to understand that uh, we will not remain untouched one of the things which is likely to happen is we could see uh, a flood of refugees into india uh, again this is not happening in the next one month two months one year it might not happen at all but it could happen uh, in the maybe the medium term uh, if things continue to de deteriorate at the rate at which they are so uh, i think we need to understand and we need to work out what our fallback position will be if a situation reaches a point like that i am not very sure if we have worked out a fallback position right now uh, that is one the other uh, will be on the security aspect you know uh, uh, what what do you do about many of the radical elements uh, who will start running amok i think uh, that is again a situation which will enmesh us for many many years uh, in trying to protect ourselves uh, no matter how much uh, you defend yourself or how many walls you build or how high and strong those walls are uh, some of this stuff is bound to come into india now the fact that you then don't have a state like pakistan to deal with makes managing or handling or eliminating some of these groups much more easier uh you but you have to develop the capabilities for that so one is the refugee crisis the other is the security crisis and both these factors will become a huge uh, concern for india if pakistan was to unravel so let me uh, let me uh, quote oscar wilde once again that there are two tragedies in life one is to not get what you desire and the other is to get it uh, so yes if pakistan does not break up uh, in to some people in india it will be a tragedy but if pakistan does break up then for many people in india it will be again a tragedy so be careful what you wish for but i think we need to keep looking at what is happening in pakistan observing it because regardless of what happens out there we are not going to remain untouched and we need to prepare for a situation like that